Namaste. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing this beautiful Sunday morning. Topic today is really actually what we're all looking towards is to freeing ourselves. And a lot of times I've seen particularly why this topic came up was that in the last few weeks there have been there have been a few people who you know uh, some people in the family who have kind of suddenly moved on passed off. there has been a lot of regret that others have held with it that oh i wish i had spent more time you know um, they carried negativity through the through their lives and now suddenly at the loss of that person you feel that big vacuum and there's so much of the past that comes in so that just showed me that how much we hold whether it's positivity or negativity and how strongly we hold more to the negativity than uh, so called positivity especially if we are feeling these energies of say regret or hurt and uh, we feel that we have not completed what we would have wanted to complete with that person that's just an example that i'm giving you but even with people around us we have a kind of a dispute or we have a you know kind of a argument and uh, we may move on in life but if we don't let that uh, sort of issue drop off from our mind and we totally kind of resolve it or we dissolve it in our energy we are holding ourselves prisoners somewhere inside because that thought is repetitively sort of hurting us poking us nagging us may not be directly with that person or that situation but in other situations that emotion or that pain will definitely <laughs> especially when you're joining in late just be very sure that you mute yourself because it just kind of disturbs the uh, entire conversation but thank you for joining in so um important for us to resolve anything that makes us feel unpleasant or kind of uncomfortable be it with somebody as close as your own child uh, your partner your parents or with somebody distant somebody working for you or somebody working with you it's very important and you may say at uh, a lot of times you know i hear that people say that it's difficult for me to go and kind of say these things to the other person because i may not be received well god knows what the other person is also carrying and actually it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you say to the other person what matters more is that you dissolve it within yourself and if you have a 100% dissolved it within yourself there will be no hesitation there will be no inhibition to reach out to that person and to say or to speak or to just share what you're thinking because actually you have come to that point where it is not important for you to be for the other person to agree to you yes it will surely feel very good and very validated if the other person agrees to you but just in case the other person decides not to agree to you forgiving that whole issue that incident or the painful emotion that that interaction brought in you you just need to let go of that and then you know there'll there'll be a kind of a healthy conversation but it doesn't need to be an argument it doesn't need to be an ego fight where you need to be at the end of that getting up end of that conversation getting up thinking that yes i was right and the other person was wrong or vice versa that's where the uh, arguments come in so you need to come into a space where you voice what you say you hold what you say in your heart true for yourself but that does not mean that the other person also needs to be believing it as his or her truth and sometimes when we hold on to these regrets when we hold on to these kind of uh, you know things that are there from the past and they um, we are actually holding ourselves as prisoners in our mind because that like i said that interaction with that particular person may not be so active or so volatile but in other situations or in other circumstances too you may feel that pain body arising so what is more important is to free yourself from that pain body 
And that pain body is actually only feeding on your thoughts, your repetitive thoughts about how you were uh, kind of put down, humiliated, cheated, whatever, whatever, you know. And uh, that repetitive mind chatter becomes so true for you that it begins to consume you. And actually, as this, this quote said, uh, it is only something that is helping you in your life journey. It's not a life imprisonment that you have to be holding on to that and you have to be living with that. And actually, when we just keep focusing on that one thing, then that becomes the prison that we sort of uh, imprison ourselves in. So what we need to do is if, if it is really something which is not leaving our mind, we need to just let it be where it is. We don't need to be you know, thinking that I have to push this out, I have to change the circumstance, I have to totally forgive it, forget it, and only then life will be beautiful and I'll be free. That is the myth that we carry many a times within us. What we actually need to do is to resolve to that, to that and move ahead, um, knowing that, you know, I am free, whatever, no argument, no, uh, you know, no interaction, no fight, nothing can hold me in that prison. Because this life is meant to be free and to be lived with full freedom. And in our day-to-day -day interactions, I mean, if we even look back at the last, say, yesterday or half a day there'll be so many times where if you are interacting with people there would be arguments if not there could be thoughts in your mind you could be hearing something you could be seeing something on the screen and disagreeing in your heart and you have thought of, sort of what yourself to a state where what you your thoughts are that is only what what uh, holds true that is the imprisonment that we hold ourselves in any thoughts, any reflections? I would love to hear from you. I'm so happy to see you, Gursharan. Hello, Auntie. That was Hi. lovely. Um, I do have a question, though. It's Good. not like you don't forgive, you don't... Like, you do forgive, you do forget. Um, But you don't go where you felt unvalued and where you... Um, didn't feel seen or heard or appreciated anyway. You don't go back there. And there's a certain guilt that comes with that that maybe creeps in with family members or like, why don't you talk to that person? Or why don't you guys still have the same relationship? But like, I personally, can I value myself more um, that I can't put myself in that same place again? And is that like... Sometimes I do feel very guilty, but I can't make myself continuously feel like that again. If you get what I'm trying to say. And it's uh, just I totally I totally get what you're trying to say. And I don't want you to put yourself there if in any which way you feel that your self-respect or, you know, your dignity, your values have been uh, are not valued and you're not respected in that relationship. But what I mean, what is bigger for me, and especially like I always emphasize, and I would encourage you to hear some of the past talks, that um, if you haven't, I know you're very regular. So the, what I'm trying to really say is that, what is it that you're feeling inside about that argument, that relationship, that interaction, that, you know, that um, relationship where probably you were not valued. And again, it comes down to our own expectations, because we feel that we have to be valued in this particular way. And yes, there could be things where you really felt that your, you know, your whole um, system was kind of, uh, even if using a strong word like demeaned or you were not really respected for who you are or your thoughts and you can't put yourself out there, it's absolutely okay. But then if the guilt is coming in, that is what is not healthy. That means that there is still something that guilt is imprisoning you. Hmm. deal with that guilt reflect on it yourself you're such a you know person who uh, who reflects who introspects think what is it why am I feeling guilty it is just a conditioned thought that yeah just because this person I have such and such a relationship with this person whether they are you know say my parents or my partner or whatever conditioned relationships um, we need to be kind of interacting with them and at a point, if we have really come to a point where I am okay with what I have said, and I don't, 
uh, want to put myself through that where I am disrespected or demeaned or devalued, I have to be okay with it. Why am I not okay with it? I'm not okay with it because I want the other person to respect me in that particular way. And because there is a part of you that also believes in it or has some energy invested there, that is why the guilt comes in. And I, I understand that it's a very, very subtle line because it's a guilt like, okay, now, you know, say it's it's something with a parent or with a sibling. It's like this person I've enjoyed my whole life with, we've grown up together and suddenly because of whatever reasons, there's a dispute and, you know, you feel devalued there. I would say it's very easy to walk out and break out of relationships, but it's very difficult to build them up. And if you are walking out of relationships uh, or you are feeling devalued, um, understand that somewhere it is your ego which is popping up and saying this and I don't want you to go there again like a doormat and lie there and tell the other person okay walk over me no that is not what I mean I mean resolve it in your heart and your mind will give you 100 reasons that they are wrong or she is wrong he is wrong they don't you know they can't be speaking to me like this or whatever whatever comes up um, but what is more important is that if in your heart or from your heart you can just say okay this happened this is this happened I may not be able to put myself out there with the other person but in my heart I really from my heart don't want to harm them and I really bless them and my mm -hmm. actions may again next time I meet them maybe that I'm talking from a very straight stern truthful way which is fine because I still stand by what I say I still uh stand there with the respect that I hold for myself you know what I mean and it is okay if the other person cannot respect me I don't rule out that relationship because there's so much more than just that I wouldn't rule out I wouldn't totally rule out that relationship I would just say okay so I don't feel respected but I'm not going to fall down to the same level as the other person or the other people, whatever it might be, it could be family disputes, it could be, you know, office politics, it could be just like sibling rivalry, it could be anything. Because if I also drop down to that level, and I've, I shut my heart, and I don't allow myself to come from that space, and just because of this one big, say, argument, interaction, whatever discussion, I kind of give up on that entire relationship, that's not being fair to life. That's not being fair to the relationship. And yes, like I said, it's a very subtle line. And actually, if you resolve it in your heart, you'll realize that there's nothing so big in it. There's really nothing so big in it. The ego will say, no, how can you let them go? They have said this, they have done this, she did. So that's, don't listen to those voices. Just feel in your heart that how much love we shared, how much, you know, we still hold for ourselves. For whatever reason, the other person may be behaving in a particular way, and you are not agreeing to that way, particularly when it is targeting to the way they are uh, kind of addressing you or interacting with you. Just re remain silent in your space. Mm. That is in a different way to deal with it. Because when you interact or you get into arguments and discussions, there is no difference between them and you. No, no. So obviously, you know this more than anyone. I feel like I've been working on my throat chakra for such a long time. And now it's come to a space where I am going towards being more silent. Um, whereas, you know, I had a phase where I would say what's in my heart very clearly, very gently. And now I just feel like I want to keep it to myself in a way, you know, just like you're saying, I want to, I want to be a little bit silent. I want to retrospect a little bit and I want to um, gain more acceptance on um what the relationship is where it's going and how it is and it's just about coming into that space of really deep acceptance for me right now wonderful wonderful but you know what i have realized we did this um, uh, retreat with uh, muji baba last month and very spontaneously we decided at the end of october to do it it was an online retreat and he gui he's guiding us now into a new kind of an exercise where he tells us to just sit just be for 10 minutes, five minutes, three minutes. And what I was discussing today morning only with Rohini was that in this particular retreat, after following so many things with uh, with Muji Baba and on this path of spirituality, listening to so many other uh, authors and writers, 
this time when you sit in that silence even for 10 minutes you can hear how noisy the mind is you're not attached to the mind you're not sort of even getting carried away with the mind because you can watch all that but you really realize that the mind will go on endlessly so just to come back to your point i gave you this example that when you are in silence, the silence is not just about external silence. And a lot of times when we are dissecting or reflecting, we are coming from the mind. And that is something which will only take you in the logical way. They did wrong. He said wrong. She put me down. All those things are absolutely telling you that you don't, you cannot have a relationship there because you were disrespected. But if you look broader, if you look from a wider space, and put yourself in that whole situation and see what is more, what is your priority. Nowadays, I really feel you have to have to define your priorities. If your peace of mind and if it makes you happy, kind of disconnecting from that relationship or withdrawing from that relationship. And a lot of times it's like even I don't want to have anything and I will never have that ever in my life with that person. I'm not very sure whether we are coming from our heart. So we have to be really evolved to be, you know, coming into that space where the silence is very peaceful and blissful because the silence is also the same argument in a, say, a more silent setup. But more important for me, for you to reflect on is the pain that it is causing, the guilt that it is making you go through. And it is nothing to do with the other person, as you know that very well. I know you understand that very well. So just reflect that if you're guilty, I'd rather do it. I'd rather go and apologize. I'd rather push myself because then I, I, you know, the guilt can't eat me because that guilt is imprisoning you. And you will find so many other people as you go along in your life journey who will be putting you down to that same level. But to make it a little more generic, to make it a little more practical, just do your forgiveness in your own heart, in your prayers and do the forgiveness for this guilt also. That if I can't see, just help me to see what is it that I need to work on? What is it that I need to release? Because I want to be at peace with the fact that, okay, this relationship is kind of over in my life. And if you're at peace with it, and if from your heart you can just bless that person, it's absolutely okay. But till the time we are not at that level and we can't do that, we know that, um, you know, we are just arguing with our ego and we're trying to pacify the ego. And that's not something which is healthy. Mm. That's just putting a band-aid for some time I've forgiven mm. and forgotten you remember I always give this example um, and many times I've given this in my talk also that that lady who came to me and she said that when I was doing her SRT that something happened 10-15 years back and there's a deep wound of hurt and you know a betrayal that you carry from there and uh, when I told her she was immediately kind of you know she got up and she said yeah I remember very well something happened 15 years back but I've totally forgiven and forgotten that because she kept getting betrayed further, further, further by people in her life. And she wanted to know that what is happening. And um, so I said, what happened 15 years back? So she said, I've forgiven and forgotten. This has this happened. This person betrayed me. So I said, OK, so can you just recall that? And when she narrated that incident of 10, 15 years back of what had happened and what that other person had said, Believe me, she could say it with that same pain. Every word that was coming was carrying the energy of that pain. And now that dialogue had 15 years of added pain, you know, attached to it. She started mm -hmm. crying. She started feeling all that, you know, all the emotions came up and she was talking the same aggressive way. And she could actually repeat it word to word. The dialogues were word to word of what had happened 15 years back and how she had been betrayed. So yes, in her mind, she thought that because she doesn't interact with that person, because she's not, you know, going or in, meeting that person who sort of betrayed her and left her in life, she's got over it. But no, that person has exited your life and probably moved on in their life wherever in this world or even in the other world. But you are still holding on to that. And that is what imprisons us. So she was carrying that pain. Where has she left that? Where has she forgiven and forgotten? Just because it's not in your physical proximity, that does not mean that you've moved above that. You're still mm -hmm. holding on to that pain. You know, there's that story that um, we read a lot of times where there are these uh, monks who are walking 
across uh, a river and there is a lady who needs help and she asks them to uh, help her cross the river and uh, the monks all refuse because it's not uh, you know so called uh, healthy to carry a woman and across the river so but one of them who's very large hearted decides to do it and he carries her across the river and he leaves her on the other end while the others are totally shocked that you know she's he's touching a woman and he's lifting a woman and so when they reach the monastery the others kind of pick it up and say to the teacher that you know he uh, carried that lady across the river and he did this and all that and um, when the teacher turned to this monk who had done that act the monk said that i actually just carried her and i left her there but these people are still carrying her they're still carrying her in their mind i just did what i needed to do as an act of kindness and i left her where she needed to but all these people who are narrating this they are still carrying her in their head does it make any sense yeah yeah of course of course thank you yeah and so when you reflect reflect on how much if such an incident were to happen again would it bring up a pain body how would you react that is what you need to reflect on you know, if you replay that thing in your mind, how would it make you feel? And a lot of times when we say, and I can say this because, you know, we've all evolved through this in living in a family, living with relationships, we do have interactions. We've all evolved through this when we say, yeah, yeah, I've forgiven her or I've forgive, forgiven them. But we are saying it from a very, very ego space, very strong ego space, I should say. It's like, yeah, I'm the bigger one in this. I've let her go. I've, you know, not, not taken his words to heart. I have kind mm -hmm. of just forgiven and I become the bigger one but that's not true that's mm -hmm. totally not true but what should be the end goal like when you relive that situation what should like be the goal of where you should be at with your emotions like how neutral should it be or do you do you get what I'm trying to say yeah so you see we always say that um like Pooja has also written, I'm not able to read her whole uh, uh, statement, but I'll ask her to speak after this, that um, how can we be would be very different for each one of us. Some of us might say that, okay, I've kind of, you know, it doesn't bring up anything within me, but that hurt has sort of numbed you so much that it's not bringing up anything in you. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to touch that because that's like opening the wound again. So I just am neutral. I don't react. I don't respond. But your heart knows that heaviness comes into you. You remember we did this in the six-week program and you think of it and your body feels heavy. That means there's something to process. You're still caught in the lower three chakras. Mm -hmm. But if you feel light and say, okay, this happened. And yes, it brings up emotions of sadness or grief, which are not linked to your personal ego. It's sad that we broke off in that relationship. It's sad that this happened. I feel, you know, it brings up a tear in my eye when I think of, uh, you know, how this happened. But I'm not attached to that because I'm in a deeper state of acceptance that it's not a life imprisonment. And I don't need to be imprisoned with it through life. I need to think, okay, this happened in my life. It was very unpleasant. And there were a lot of things that happened. I was not able to process it at that time. But now I'm not carrying that pain. It's like when you lose somebody and people say, move on, move on. All your life, you'll be feeling that void, won't you? All your life, you'll feel the pain of that loss. Maybe it reduces. But if you really sit and reflect, the, the tears will come up. The emotions will come up. But how attached are you to those emotions? That's the imprisonment. The coming up of the emotions is very normal and very natural. And it would, in fact, be very abnormal to in this human form to not feel those emotions. Because we have not evolved to that level of being sages where, you know, we not, we feel nothing. We feel it, but we don't attach ourselves and we don't make that feeling our life story. You understand? Mm -hmm. Again, there's a subtle line. I feel the sadness, but then I don't go on into the story. Oh, he did this. He was wrong. She was wrong. Or I should have done this. A lot of times it could be about myself also I should have responded better I should not have reacted but it's too late because your ego will not let you go there now so whatever it is it had to happen in that way when that acceptance comes the neutrality will come on its own but not minus the emotion the emotion mm -hmm. will come up 
because it's a such a deep relationship and these usually happen in very close deep relationships where you have invested a lot of your time energy a lot of things love isn't it so let the emotions come up but you see what is your priority what is it that you need to kind of uh, prioritize on or bring up which is important for you what would be your um, how would you want to live further with this wound which you know will always be there in your life isn't it then the resolution will come because you yourself will guide yourself what you need to do and how you need to do it does that make sense yeah yeah of course thank you right yes pratika hi aunty and I, i don't know if this is the right uh, forum to ask this question but i'm still just going to go ahead um so this could it also be related to a past hurt which is a situation not a person uh, can i bring that up the thing is we are dealing with how you are feeling about it and i started by saying this if there is anything that makes you feel uncomfortable it may not be another person it may not be another situation it may just be a mind chatter in your own head your own projections your own fears it can be anything that makes you feel uncomfortable okay uh, so let's say if there is a situation that in the past uh, i'm going to be slightly specific here let's say covid for example was a difficult time for a lot of us right yeah. now somebody gifted me a photo of uh, of you know my my husband and my daughter uh, and more like like a gift uh, in terms of putting it down but that photo is that time when he returned and it's it's a it's a it's a time i don't want to in my i don't want to go back to it's like that like i've dealt with it whatever mm. so would it be so in my head i was saying okay like while i'm really thankful for the gesture but maybe i sh- i don't want to put up the photo so would it is it okay like the other person did it with an intent but for me it brings up very di- different emotions so can i would it would it be fair to myself to just not put it up like it's not being disrespectful it's just that i'm respecting my own feelings at this point in time would that be okay absolutely okay if you are okay with it but i would still say that there is some residual energy that is still attached to that and it is you, do, you needn't put it up you needn't put it up but you put it in a place where you know it's like kept respectfully and actually these are the triggers these are the things that we need to kind of work through because it, the wound is maybe very fresh right now or the you know the thing is like uh, you know i remember what happened and that whole trauma of um, uh, the covid then of course the thing is that i have not dealt with it and actually this is what carries on through generations through lifetime say, you know so i just need to bring into my prayers and be thankful that i mean at that same photo i could bring in to say wow thank god that you know he survived this and he came out of this and this was the happiest moment that i can think of in my life isn't it but that's right. my perception but i'm still so caught in the lower chakra that i feel no no instantly when i look at it it reminds me of that trauma obviously i have not fully processed that trauma and i just need to understand that i have to shift from that fear to love the moment i shift that whether the picture is put up or not put up that question will also will not, not affect me right but then let's say how do like let's say if you have to guide me in terms of how do i process it like then then like how does one really do it so in the same way in a way like i was telling gosharan when you think of it it does bring up fear it does bring up uh, you know kind of anxiety especially all that that you went through and see what happens what is bringing up these pain bodies it's like at that emotionally charged time you did not know how to process your emotions right that's why mm. those emotions got stuck mm. isn't mm. It? that's why those mm. emotions got stuck what happens when there's a small child who loses a a a parent or someone the child is not even understanding say a one year two year old child the child is not even understanding what is happening but there's a mm. trauma there's an energy a collective energy of trauma which was also there during covid i mean unfortunately you went right through it but there were many who didn't go through it but mm. the trauma was there the fear was there all around so we did not know how to handle that emotion at that time and that right. leaves that scar that's what we even call as inner child clear uh, healing because at that moment the child is not equipped enough to handle that uh, emotion 
because of whatever, you know, maybe the child obviously is not evolved to that level or cannot even understand. And that's why many of us get stuck at this age when you and I speak now that I'm grown up. I know COVID happened. It happened. We went through it. It's over. But why is it still impacting me? It, right. Because it's not just the COVID. It's the traumas that have happened before or maybe in generations before. And it comes down to you. But now how do we do deal with it? We don't need to be caught in it because now we have to understand. Let's shift to gratitude. Simply, I'm not going to go by shutting that photo inside and not looking at it. Will my trauma be healed? Not at all. No, no. In fact, I would no. say look at it and just be so thankful and you'll see each of you smiling in that photograph and it'll be out and over. Move to a higher vibration. Got it. Move to a higher vibration and then look at that photo. Immediately gratitude will come in. Right. Is it? And that doesn't mean that it has it has dealt with that trauma. But when you think of it, if you just keep saying thank you, thank you that you know he got out of it, he survived, he whatever, then your focus is off that trauma of whatever he went through. Got it, isn't it? So always come from the heart. The ego will put you into fear. That's the default mode. That's the mm -hmm. default mode that we slip into. But we need mm -hmm. to shift into a higher vibration of say love or even beyond say gratitude. And then the moment we focus on the same thing from that angle, the the issue actually gets resolved. And even if you talk about the trauma later, you don't make it your life story. You don't make it like an, you know, an epic because then you become victimized with it. Right. Right. right? right. Narrated as something that happened, but not with any judgment of good or bad. And right. not, oh my God, you went through this. My God, so poor you. No. Right. Not that right. that okay, thank God I had the courage to, you know, uh drive myself through this and I didn't lose myself. You know, look at the subtle positive things also that happened at that time, how much it helped you to grow. Right. right. Like don't imprison yourself in that one incident or one situation which was like a trauma in your life. And there have been so many. There have been right. so many in each one of our lives, if we just keep going back to them, we'll never be free of all this. You know, but it's so beautiful you're saying that, Andy, because I think we, like, you know, you often say that, you know, you get a sign, it almost feels like a sign that it's time to heal and time to get over and this talk, it's just all in sync. It's like, it's all happening parallelly. So it's almost like a sign that maybe it's just time to let that go. Yeah. Like, See the thing. Thank you so much. I'm going to dissect you today because now that you're here, I'm not going to let you go. <laughs> it's like it's time to let it go. I mean, it was always time to let it go. Why would one want to even carry it for these past two years or three years? Isn't it? Right. It's right. No value. Something that is giving you pain. Why would you want to carry it? Simple as that. Right. That thought gives me pain. Why would? Why do I want to think about it? Because my ego gets a kind of a. You know, it's something, something is kind of bombing or massaging the ego when I go back there that my life was not fair. It was injustice. Like all those things of victimization, if I misuse a broad word. But if I step back and say, I mean, I never carried it. I didn't want to, I don't want to carry it. So it doesn't belong to me. If you don't own it, it's not yours. It cannot cause pain. And sometimes it's superficial because, you know, deep inside it creates a churning in your stomach. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's just a, that's just telling you that, yes, it is there. But the fact is that there is never the right time to let it go. Don't own it only. Don't think that you're mm -hmm. carrying it. What mm -hmm. are you carrying? Can I ask you what you're carrying? Nothing. But if you think of it, you're carrying all that weight on you. And you've been carrying it for years. Not just mm -hmm. this, maybe mm -hmm. so much more. And all of us are carrying it. But the moment you decide that this doesn't belong to me, there's nothing to let go of. Mm, 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 coming to mm. your center it's like I'm really trying to push this thought out push this thought out it's just not going I mean how strong mm. you are and what is a thought but it's not going in spite of your own all physical mental emotional strength that thought mm. is consuming you to the level that it is making you sick it is giving mm. you a migraine it is giving you a backache whatever it might be mm. and it's mm. just a thought but the moment I don't put my energy in even pushing it away and I say let the thought be wherever it is Baba I'm not paying attention Mm, 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 like when mm. I do the talk, I I'm not so very I'm not used to wearing my AirPods, but I know that you know there it's a Sunday morning and all that the street is very noisy because all the kabadi wala and all the vendors come in only on Sunday. Just now when I heard mm. it, it was like it was a distraction. But if I listen to that, it will be so noisy. But okay, they mm. have to come. It's their work. Let them come. I'm focusing here. 
that sound will just not disturb me. Later on, mm. when I hear the recording, it will be, oh, that was there in the background. You know what mm. I mean? So don't... But it, your like, like you're saying, I think also, I mean, when you're saying that, and it's it's something I never really thought of. It It's probably also a story of your own resilience that you tell yourself, right? I am resilient. It's like you're saying, you're bombing your own ego, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and, and honestly, I never thought about it. But yeah, because... I think when somebody says, what are the two things describe about yourself? The first thing I say is resilience. And it's coming from a lot of these, you know, points in my life. So it's undealt with to a certain extent because I'm not, I'm saying it with feeling not, not neutrality. Yeah, exactly. And resilience is what? Resilience is like, I'm ready to fight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm standing here nice and tall and I have all the, resilience to fight you so you're inviting and fight it's like yeah i'm strong but then where are you coming from you're coming from a space of fear you're coming from an ego space totally isn't it yeah i'm very strong i can deal with it yeah but then you can deal with it in the physical way that it won't hit you physically but the emotional you know hits in a way or the emotional things that are thrown at you don't need any kind of resilience just let them brush past you right 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 you will pop up and say come on now fight Go out, Pratika, fight. Put all your wisdom, your knowledge, your strength there. But the fact is that it's already twisted a pain body inside and that's not something that you can just, you know, set right like a fracture or something because it's fractured right. something deeper. The scars are definitely deeper. And those are right. invisible scars. You'll only come to know when you come to the next point or you go back to that, that how fresh it is still in your energy. That right. will you how much you have dealt with with those cars so i would not want to be resilient because if i'm resilient it's like i'm inviting it and i'm all prepared Let but it is like attracting the same situation exactly. like similar yeah. situations yeah. yeah got it so, so then Ali, what's the right thing to say you i mean then who are like who like let's say if i have to say who are you it's yeah. like how do you really describe that then i mean I, I i'm sorry i don't intend to deviate but it's just that all of these experiences have accumulated in who you are right whatever that story is yeah, but who are you? You are nothing but love. You're nothing but joy. You're nothing but peace. I mean, when you're in love with somebody, nobody needs to remind you. You just dissolve in that other person's energy also, if I may say. I mean, look at your child. There's no separation. Isn't it? That is what right. you are. And same way, whether it is somebody attacking you, be it a partner or a parent or somebody who's cheated you in your business, or it is your own child or your own, you know, house help or whatever, you're all mm-hmm. one. That is who you are. If anybody asks you who you are, you just say that, yeah, I'm just love. And there is no separation. I'm just you. You are me. This is oneness. And yes, it sounds like big, big words. But if you start speaking and connecting like that, you'll see something shifting. In because yeah, you will. Or, or yeah, that and it's, there will be a shift. will not let you say that. Your ego will not let you say that. You know, you say, no, you are you. I am I. You know, I am. This is me. And these are, what you're talking is not about who you are. What you're talking is about what are the values? What are the virtues? What defines you? But we're actually trying to dissolve all those definitions and just merge in with something which is when you love somebody, if that person has a lot of negative things also in his or her life, you you are okay to own that also to some level because the love is bigger than anything else. Right. Right. It? And when we move out of love, when we fall into those lower chakras of fears and anxieties and, you know, uh, those ego battles, as I might say, then it is really constricting ourselves and bringing us into that prison. And what this whole talk really meant was, and really thank, thank you for sharing this, is that free yourself now. It's Even if something like this happened, firstly in the past with COVID or whatever, this picture, this thought that, yeah, I'm very resilient whatever i don't even want to go into what was the topic and what was not the topic it is not a life imprisonment it is just to show you i'm not judging you for saying you are resilient i feel that's wonderful that you shared it so many of us would not even understand or would find ourselves at that same kind of uh, you know same if i may say a level there's no real level or hierarchy i believe but yeah we are still thinking that we are that but we need to step out of that and you by putting yourself out by speaking it up, it's like, I don't own this. Yeah, and then- I, interestingly, we always say it as a positive. But I think when you were describing, I was just like, no, but somewhere this is not a positive. Like somewhere, okay, great, you went through the situation. But um, 
I mean, somewhere you're attracting very similar stuff because you've, like you said, you've owned it, right? So, so very, very grateful. I don't think this would have ever crossed me, literally. If you would say that, who are you? I'm nothing but love and joy and peace. What will you attract? <laughs> You'll end up becoming that at some point. Absolutely. Because you are that. You are that. Right. Isn't it? It's just these layers of conditioning, life, whatever. We all grow up and all that kind of goes into the background. But if you just sit with your center without any agenda, without any resilience, any thoughts, there's nothing, there's absolutely nothingness, isn't it? And that's right. what you need to be in. And like to be sometimes when, you know, it all sounds as if they're too, too too good to be spoken in terms of words. But what I, what I would say is that really bring in that power of prayer. It has become so important for me and I really want to share it with everybody I meet. Whatever you're feeling caught up with, whatever it is, if it is just a simple thing that, God, I just want a cab to come in five minutes or it's something bigger that I have to get this job or I want to marry this person, whatever, just put it in your prayers. As Muji Baba now beautifully says, put that basket, you know, put it in the basket of God. It's lying there at the feet of God. Just put it there and then see what happens. Just see what happens. So just ask if you say, yeah. God, just drop this thought of resilience from my mind. I just want, you know, just drop it. But not say that I want to fight it. Just say that, show me the way, you know, just take it away, God. It doesn't belong to me. Simple, simple things, whatever. It's just so wonderful because firstly, you know that you have put it somewhere where it can be resolved. Otherwise, we are still thinking, okay, will my boss be able to do it? Will my child be able to do it? But if I put it out there to God, then we know that whatever is best, it will unfold in that way. Right. Thank you so much, Anki. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's why I tell you, Pritika, don't miss these talks. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> we love your, I mean, I love your sharing. It's really wonderful. And that goes for all of you. I'm sure that, you know, though only you and Gursharan have spoken, but you've spoken for many of us many many of us and we've all gone through these things and some are still going and we still fall back into it all of us we fall back we don't have to judge ourselves that same thought put me down but now i am aware that i can pull myself out i can center myself i can come back to my breath i can do a little grounding i can do a little tapping i can do something to make myself not just comfortable but understand that this is something which is just phenomenal just passing away. I don't have to stay imprisoned in this all my life. I've just learned a lesson or whatever needed to be revealed or shown to me has been revealed and now I'm ready to move on. Wonderful. Puja, do you want to share, say something? I was trying to read your question in between, but I couldn't read it fully. Okay. Hello, hello, auntie. Good, hello. good morning to everybody. And I'm so looking forward to see you in Mumbai. Yeah, I'm going to be there very soon. It will be going to be coffee with auntie, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you answered my point very well. And yes, I my question or my statement that I made it on the note was, um, yes, it's uh, there is a change that happens. So thanks to the SRT, firstly, I was holding on to a lot of pain before the SRT. And I, the reason I'm stating this example out here is because I want to perhaps uh, re-announce myself and to readdress this thing. I was holding on to pain, which was 12, 15 years within me. And uh, with the direction, with your help and your direction, the pain is not there. And if you ask me to narrate that situation one more time, perhaps I will be able to narrate it. But this time, it will not be with anger, frustration, tearfulness. It would be more of knowing that, yeah, that thing happened. It gave me pain, but it's okay it happened. Wonderful. So that's the shift that I feel today that, yes, it has taught me something. It happened. Yes, I am able to narrate it because that's a scar and it hasn't gone and can't go. But it's all right. It happened. So I think for me, it, the impact is no longer there. It was impactful earlier. It's not impacting me anymore now. So that's what I wanted to address. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank and you. Actually, when you go along, like, you know, at that time, when I told you at that time, whatever pain you were going through, it seemed unbelievable to think that that can ever go. And even now you said in one statement that it can never go. Believe me, it will go. It's like, it you know... Go. 
when you get hurt and you get stitches for the first two years it's like oh my gosh I have this scar on the side of my face and it's looking so ugly and it pains and you know whenever I think of it the part that is tender slowly slowly that wound heals and as you grow actually sometimes it just merges with your skin that you don't even realize years yeah. down the line. and there comes a point which I can say very very strongly now that when somebody asks you in a very in a very confident way, you say that, I mean, it just doesn't come into your mind. It just doesn't come into your mind because you have now moved into a very high vibration and you don't want to put your energy there. You just don't yeah. want to put your energy there. I'm going to share a very personal thought here that, you know, when I went for the first time to the silent retreat to Portugal, I, um, you know, it was a miraculous way that I reached there and I thought I must stand up and narrate that how universe, grace, Guruji has brought me to this place where I was dying to come. And it seemed absolutely impossible. And there's nothing less than a miracle that has, or God's grace that has brought me here. So to honor that, I should stand up and I should speak up, you know. And it took me, I mean, I'm not the kind of person who would just raise my hand in, in the midst of thousands of people and be called onto the stage to speak. I'd never done it before. But I stood up, I raised my hand and believe me, I raised my hand on the last day thinking that I should at least honor this. And out of the thousands of people, I mean, he's not going to point to you and tell you to come up. But when I raised my hand and I lifted it up, uh, he pointed directly to me. There was nobody around me. So I went up to the mic and of course I narrated that story. I don't want to narrate it again here. But what I want to say that in that story, when I narrated it, because I was so deeply, you know, kind of... Um, enjoying Muji Baba's pointings for the last three, four years. And finally, I came to this retreat. I said that, you know, these have been the most, the last three years have been the best years of my life. And later on, my teacher Rohini reminded me that, you know, it was in these three years that you lost your husband. And imagine standing in a, in a, in a crowd and saying that because the peace and the joy of what life had to happen it did. It's not that that pain has gone away, but that joy is so big that that pain just doesn't come up. And I'm saying it now. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, if my family hears it, what will they say? But I don't think that way because this whole joy, peace and spiritual path that took me and lifted me up from there is definitely worth honoring. And not to say that, you know, that pain or that loss in my life can ever be replaced. But I don't need to be living and making that my life story. You know, it's a very personal thing, but I'm just sharing it out here. And I know this is going to go out. But I totally believe that that pain is always, I wouldn't even say that's a pain. But like Pratika said, it happened. Yeah. We, don't have yeah. To be, yeah. we don't have to be living with it endlessly and not freeing ourselves. Because life has so much more to offer. You just have to put yourself and understand, you know, like even in that Osho cards, that Osho um, uh, tarot that I teach, you feel that you are imprisoned. But actually, if you look, those bars are open. The lock is open. You just need to see that you are feeling that you are behind bars. But those bars, that lock that you feel is locking those bars is actually open. You need to step out and, you know, throw that lock away and the world is open to you. You're so absolutely great. right, Auntie. So I just wanted to add one more thing, like you really said. Now, if somebody brings up that topic, yes, I go back. But earlier, I would just self-pity myself, self-sabotage myself, using that as an example for everything right and wrong happening in my life. Yeah. And now, yeah. when people only ask me, although I that topic never comes now, uh, I also don't remember it. But then I revisit and say, yeah, this is what happened. But now it's more of a casual talk. Earlier... Yeah. It's I would not relate a pain, huh? and actually you will realize in your conversation the whole energy the narration changes because you're not saying it from a point of blame you're not saying it from a victimized space in fact I feel that these situations these incidents in your life whether it was the COVID that Pritika was talking about or what you talk about or what even I have talked about we have to use these situations in our lives to empower ourselves because there's so many out there who are going through same kind of situations who may have lost a partner at a young age but that does not mean that you have to imprison yourself and not you know step out just because your partner chose to move on in his journey you know early in your uh, in your marriage that's not the end of it yes we say we would not kind of 
you know, um, want to say achieve what we have achieved through this incident, or we wouldn't want to go through that. That's a big loss. But that does not mean that you cannot use that same situation to empower you and move ahead. And that's not empowerment of the ego or the mind that, yeah, yeah, see, I got over it. No, that even when I talk about it, there is a little heaviness that comes into my body when I talk about it. But I'm not, I'm not kind of brewing on it or chewing on it to make it big. Okay, that's a reaction that the body will give because it's such a, you know, big trauma that has happened in your life. But I have absolutely, I mean, I may even feel the emotions. I may even cry. I may feel, but that doesn't mean that that is what is governing my life. I'm not imprisoning myself with that situation in my life. So use these use these interactions, these kind of situations that happen to empower yourself only to empower yourself in love, you know, grow from the heart and not the ego. And you'll be able to do it. Just pray that you're shown the way to get out of it with love. And there will be a day when you will say, God, really bless that person because I really don't want the person to be harmed. Again, we could be saying that from the ego space or from the heart space. And you'll actually, the person may come in front of you and you may not feel any of the pain because you're only love and you're looking at that other person also with the eyes of love. And you will see that there is so much more in that relationship than just this one sort of interaction or this one thing which caused pain in your life. You were meant to move on and grow in your life and you have to honor the other person who pushed you into that, who gave you that platform isn't it? So honor that. I mean, I remember I was told this, you know, uh, many years after my husband's death that honor that, that came to me when like, you know, honor this, that sometimes for your growth, there are people in your life who constrict for your expansion. Isn't it? Of course, that's sad as it seems, but the reality is that these things happen. Sorry on the light did not thank God it happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that for myself, but yes, I honor whatever it was. It was meant to happen in this way, and I respect that. And actually, I look at new years that we shared, which were like so wonderful. I see people, you know, married for 50 years, 60 years, but the relationship is so tense, and you know, there's no respect. Rather, you spend a lesser amount of time with full respect and love. Isn't it? I, I value that. And it can never be enough, of course. <laughs> it is what it is. Yes, Auntie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you and God bless you. See you soon, Pooja. And anyone else who's in Mumbai, I'm very happy to um, meet anyone or yes, any of your friends and me who are there. Thank you and love you and God bless you.